It sounds simple, but people move. So when you start sketching a person, it helps to draw their movement first. These lines will help you keep track of where their body parts are, which, trust me, can get confusing when you're first starting out. Make lines for their head, neck, shoulders, arms, hips, and legs. Keep your strokes loose. Remember, people are made of curves, not corners. Bent knees and elbows look a lot more realistic when they're depicted as a curve connecting two different shapes. Which brings me to my next tip. People are just shapes. The neck, your arms, and legs are really just cylinders. Hands are like trapezoids, and of course, your head is an oval. Well, for the most part. Drawing these shapes and connecting them with curved lines will pretty quickly get you close to drawing a human body. Now, your first few tries will be failures. Eventually, you will start to see progress. If you're up for it, you could go to an art studio and draw from a live model, but I've just been drawing from magazines and coffee table books. Over the last few weeks, I've been following this formula of movement, curves, and shapes. I was genuinely surprised how much improvement I saw. Breaking down something that felt so intimidating at first into smaller, more simple steps felt like I was cracking the code. I felt ready to revisit my sketch of the musician in the park. When I first drew this figure, I made a lot of mistakes. My first sketch is full of sharp corners, which made him look a bit stiff. There's no movement at all in this sketch, and it just feels flat and lifeless. After a bit of practice, I revisited this sketch, and my second and third tries ended up being my favorites. The draping of the jacket and pants, especially at the hips and knees, make both of these sketches appear more lifelike and three-dimensional. I felt like I was really getting somewhere with these, and I couldn't wait to add color. The markers I picked up last week have found their way into my rotation. I just love that I'm able to lay down colors and shapes quickly. I used pastels and colored pencils to soften the shadows and add details, and while I loved how it looked, I wasn't so sure of the colors. It came out a lot more vibrant than I had intended, so I wanted to try again, using more neutral tones, and I decided to grab some watercolor as well. I used it to lay down a base layer of color, and then I used markers, colored pencils, and pastels to add details.
Eventually, I'd like to make this into a large painting, but I think it'll take a few more tries on a small scale before I get there. For now, I'm just happy that I drew something that actually looked like a person.